The success Washington has enjoyed in the 80s is the result of a proud winning tradition. Throughout the years, the Redskins have maintained an unrivaled level of excellence, instilled 50 seasons ago by the team's spirited founder. George Preston Marshall invested in the Boston Braves in 1932. But it wasn't until the flamboyant showman moved his team to Washington in 1937 that the Redskins began to earn rave reviews. Merchandising the team like his successful laundry business, Marshall proudly introduced pro football's first marching band, first fight song, and halftime shows that occasionally got a bit out of hand. Our last home game before Christmas, you know, in December, the first time he had a helicopter flying over and had Santa Claus bail out and the wind picked the Santa Claus up and like they killed him. Put it on top of the buildings back here. But how smart he was, he had a substitute on under there. Here he comes out, see? And Marshall, he put on the show. Marshall's flair for showmanship even extended to the signing of his number one draft choice, Slingin' Sammy Baugh. When I was in school at TCU, I was flying to Washington to sign a contract. And uh, at that time, I didn't wear boots. I didn't wear a cowboy hat at that time. But uh, Mr. Marshall told me to wear a cowboy hat and boots and uh, have a little Western flair there. And I did. Marshall turned Baugh into an urban cowboy. And in his very first season, Sling and Sammy successfully tamed the wild frontiers of pro football. In the 1937 NFL Championship game, Ball threw for over 300 yards and three touchdowns, two to Hall of Famer Wayne Milner, number 40, in a 28-21 win over the Bears. While Chicago turned around and embarrassed Washington 73-0 in the 1940 title game, two years later, Ball once again passed the Redskins to the world title and revenge by beating the Bears 14 to 6. In the late 30s and 40s, Washington was one of the NFL's most exciting teams. And Marshall ensured the Redskins' popularity by casting only the finest players in starring roles. Running back Cliff Battles led Washington in rushing in 1937. And along with Andy Farkas and Dick Todd began the long list of great Redskin backs. Ball made the forward pass an offensive weapon instead of a desperate measure and benefited from receivers such as Wayne Milner and Hugh Bones Taylor, number 28. While the early defenses were often overshadowed, Players like lineman Turk Edwards and defensive back Dan Sandifer earned star status. But Washington was known for its aerial circus. And George Marshall's ringleader was Hall of Famer Sammy Baugh, who in 14 seasons led the Redskins to five division titles and two world championships. In the 50s, Marshall signed the diminutive Eddie LeBaron, and the imaginative owner devised a method for LeBaron to measure up to Baugh's lofty stature. Mr. Marshall uh, didn't want a short quarterback. 
So in the programs in those days, initially I was 5'10 and 180 when we started, and gradually they finally talked him into putting my true size down of 5'7 and 160. LeBaron led Washington in passing five times, proving he could stand tall against NFL defenses. Other standouts in the mid-50s included running back Billy Wells, number 41, whose 88-yard touchdown is still a team record, and North Carolina's Charlie Choo Choo Justice, number 22. Aided by the blocking of number 60 three-time Pro Bowl guard Dick Stanfell, Don Bossler, number 31 of the famous 57 all-rookie lollipop backfield, emerged as Washington's top runner in the late 50s. Defensive end Gene Brito, a five-time Pro Bowler, was the mainstay of the defense. Along with Pro Bowl linebackers Chuck Drazanovich and Torgi Torgerson, and defensive back Norb Hecker, number 48. Hecker led the team in interceptions for two consecutive seasons. Two other heroes of the 50s, this defensive back, number 25, and this sure-handed wide receiver, number 81, are still NFL competitors. Both eventually gave up their helmets for headsets and are now successful head coaches with the New York Jets and Miami Dolphins. In 1961, the Redskins moved into D.C. Stadium, where halfback Dickie James explored the new turf in frenzied fashion. James' electrifying running style was matched by the high-voltage output of receiver Bobby Mitchell. While Mitchell, who in 1962 became the Redskins' first black player, was busy breaking new ground in Washington, quarterback Sonny Jerkison earned notoriety by breaking training. <laughs> 